Hi, this is Simon Obstel. I hope you're all keeping safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this interesting motion graphic effect. I saw somebody do something similar in After Effects, so I thought it'd be interesting to see what it would be like to replicate that in motion, given that you need to use some fairly different techniques. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is set up our project. Now I've got a project that's 90, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, and it's five seconds long. But initially what I want to do is I want to set the height to 5400. Now what I've done is I've actually made a preset for that because what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to switch between 1080 and 5400. And I've been experiencing difficulties with resetting the height for some reason in this version of motion. So a height of 5400, a width of 1920. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add generators. We're going to add a gradient. So let me zoom out so we can see our canvas like that. And let's open up the gradient and let's just pick some colors. I'm going to go with a nice dark color like that at the bottom and this color at the top. Let's select the adjust item tool from the menu down there. And let's drag that up to there and this down to the bottom. So next, what we need to do is we need to set up some animation paths, three of them to be precise. And to do that, we want to turn on the grid. So let's turn that on. And in my preferences, I've set this up to be 360 pixels wide. And we can adjust our color. I've gone for this so, we, so it reads better against my gradient background. But, you know, we could go for black if we wanted. So then that allows us to more easily set up our paths. Before we draw any actual shapes, I want to create some circles that the paths can navigate around. So I'm going to select the circle tool and holding down the shift and the option keys, I'm going to drag out a circle like that. Let's come to geometry and make that radius 200. And let, again, let's set up some colors for this. Come to style, turn on fill. We'll have that dark color for the outline. And for the fill, we'll use our light color and we'll make it 50% opaque. So I'll have my first one there. Let's select the transform tool there. And I'm going to hold down the option key. Let's have another one here, I think. Uh, these random obstacles that our paths can move between. And then my final one I want to have up here. Now I'm going to actually position that accurately at 2160 on Y and zero on X. Then what we can do is we can select our Bezier tool. If we open up the HUD, so window show HUD, what we need to do is we need to have an outline and no fill. And let's just reduce that down to about 25, something like that. And I'm going to start at this bottom intersection here. And I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to, I don't know, come up to around here. And um, this one is going to shoot around the side of that. And then let's maybe come up to here and possibly there. And then we're going to end up here. I should have made that smooth so we get a nice little dip into our end position like that. I think that'll do for my first one. So enter to close the path or finish the path, I should say. And let's call this red path. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make that outline color red. It's just so we can keep tabs on what we're doing. So then I'm going to duplicate this, right click duplicate. Let's call this green path. And let's just change up the color so it's green. So making sure our transform tool is selected, we're going to come to the Y rotation and set that to 180. And we just need to move this into position like so. So then we can select our edit points tool and make some changes to the path. So let's maybe have this one go there. 
Let's have it skirt around this obstacle here. Stretch out that bezier handle. Okay, so that's my green path. Let's duplicate that. Let's call it blue path. Let's change its color to blue. And let's make some more changes to this. Maybe the blue does a nice sort of jink around that one there. Maybe something like this is going to be good for blue. Okay, so then we need to make another circle that's going to be the leading edge of each, each of these paths. So let's select the circle tool, hold down the shift and option key and drag out a circle. And uh, let's turn off outline, let's turn on fill. Let's select this as the color, I think. We can center it up, but actually then what we're going to do is we're going to use a motion path on this. So come to behaviors, basic motion, motion path. And then we're going to select geometry. And then let's select red path as the geometry. And then what that does is it allows that to follow along the path, which is good. Okay, so then what we do, we're going to do is we're going to come to three seconds on the timeline. And we're going to hit O on the keyboard with that motion path selected. So that animation is finished by three seconds like that. The next thing we want to do is we want to set the speed to custom because that'll allow us to adjust the, the path a bit. And I'm going to open up the keyframe editor. So here, let's make sure animated is selected and then it'll bring up the relevant parameters. I'm going to alt click on custom speed so we can isolate that. And then I'm just going to make sure that it speeds up towards the end like that by dragging that Bezier handle down a bit so it'll, it'll speed up towards the end. And now we've got something like that. So then we can duplicate this circle, right click duplicate, and then we can use in our motion path, we can use the green path. Let's duplicate it again, right click duplicate. In our behaviors, let's use the blue path for the motion path like that. And now we've got all three and then moving along our paths like that. So I've just renamed those three circles to correspond to their respective paths. Then what we need to do is we want these paths to grow with the position of the circles. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to, let's first of all select the red path, come to style, come to last point offset, and we'll add parameter behavior link, We'll drag the red path, or rather the red sphere, into the uh, source object there. And then we'll select Behaviors, Motion Path, Custom Speed. And I think you can see how that's now, the red path is growing with the position of the circle. So we can just do the same thing with the other two. So the green path, style, last point offset, add parameter behavior link, use the green sphere there, and then behaviors, motion path, custom speed. And finally, same thing again with the blue style, last point offset, add parameter behavior link, drag in the blue sphere. Let's behaviors, motion path, custom speed. And it's looking good. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make all this disappear when it hits the end point there at three seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group here. So object new group, and I'm going to put my spheres and my paths into it. Then with the group selected, I'm going to come to three seconds and I'm going to hit O on the keyboard to end the group at that point. I'm going to come to behaviors, basic motion, fade in, fade out. And let's have a fade in, fade out of four frames. And so that's just going to pop those off right at the end there. And they're going to appear from nothing as well. Now, the other thing we need to do is we need to apply the correct color to our paths. So just above the blue path there, I'm going to make a new group. So object, new group, and drag the paths into it, like so and then come to filters, stylize, and I'm going to look for fill. And then we just need to change our color to that same color as our spheres, like that. 
I know. Rather like the way they emerge out of the darkness there at the bottom. And then we want to animate that final circle there. So let's come to that there. It's the, it's the top one of those. So at three seconds, we want to come to properties, keyframe the scale control. Let's step forward three frames, scale that up a bit like that. 135 is probably going to do. Step forward six frames, three, four, five, six, and set that scale value down to zero. So we just get that little vanishing circle at the end there. Okay, so we're getting close uh, to being able to add our camera, but first of all, I would like to add some sort of particles, as it were, that we can move past. And to do that, I'm going to select the circle tool yet again, draw another circle like that, and come to shape here, turn off outline, turn on fill. Let's just center it up. Then I'm going to come to object replicate, with the overlays turned on and my adjust item tool selected, I'm just going to drag these out like that, bring it down a bit like that, and then set the arrangement to random fill. Let's have 20 points, something like that. Let's have a scale roundness of 50. Maybe our circle's a little bit big. Let's go for a radius of 50 on that. And we want to move our replicator right down below everything to there, so it's behind our other elements. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my gradient back on Z. So let's come to its position. Let's move that to negative 1000. So this is going to give us some parallax. Obviously moving it back like that means we have to scale it back up again. So let's just scale it so it fills the frame. So that's 145 there. And that replicator there, let's also move that. Let's move it to negative 500 on Z. If you don't like the look of those, the way those particles are arranged, you can always click on the replicate seed button there, get a different arrangement. So the next thing to do is to close up our master group, make sure everything's inside it. We're going to turn this to 3D, and then we're going to come to add object camera. And then let's come to our project and let's switch from that 5400 height to 1080. Oh, in that case, it's allowing me to do it, but it's being a little bit temperamental. So 1080 there. If that hasn't worked, then you'll hopefully have made a preset that you can revert to. So that's a 1080 preset. So how are we going to animate our camera? Well, there are various options, but I think ultimately the easiest thing to do is simply to keyframe it. So let's come to the first frame and let's keyframe the Y position. And let's just scroll down till we get to, to the bottom of our image there. And then let's come to three seconds on the timeline. And let's go the other way. Scroll up past our scene till we get our circle nicely centered up. In fact, we know what that number is. It's 2160. So how does that work? It's not too bad, but what I'd really like is for the camera to be pulling out as we rise up through the scene. Again, I'm going to come back to the first frame and I'm going to keyframe the Z position. I'm going to move forward to my three second mark and let's just pull out on Z to where around there somewhere. Don't want to be seeing that other stuff down below. Obviously, we'll need to adjust our gradient, so we just scale that up again till it fits. And now we've got something looks like that. I think I've started quite a bit too low with the camera, in fact, so let's move that up. Let's try negative 2500. And that's probably better. So there's just one final refinement I want to make here, and that's to make these moving elements a little bit more interesting looking and more organic. So that group there we made that contained those elements, the paths and the circles, I'm going to select that. I'm going to come to filters and select Gaussian blur, and I'm also going to select color levels. Let's crank the Gaussian blur up to 64. 
let's select alpha from the on the levels there and bring in the black and then bring in the white as well and you see as we do so and you'll see that they sort of glue to each other and so on so that's that's a much nicer look i think and finally i'm not happy that my fade out is happening a little bit too soon uh, and my animation is not completing so what, what i'm going to do is i'm going to come into my motion paths here and i'm going to open up the video timeline what we can do is just we can bring that motion path finish point forward maybe even a couple of frames like so that's the red one do the same with the green bring that back a couple of frames and the same with the blue and that's just a bit better like that yeah i'm happier with that so that's more or less it but one thing you'll probably want to do is to turn on motion blur which is going to make it look a lot nicer i think and because that's a little bit extreme i always like to knock it back so i come to the settings here and set that shutter angle down to 180 and it just it's a little bit less crazy and one other thing which i'm sure you've been noticing as we're going through is that our gradient is producing a lot of really ugly banding and we need to sort that out so we can come to filters stylize add noise let's select uh, blue noise and let's set the amount down to 0.1 and that really should take care of the banding issue. So there you go, that's the effect. Thanks very much indeed for watching, and uh, I hope to see you again another time. Stay well.